<laughs> Love Talk Radio. You're tuned into N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news with your hosts, Greg Prescott and Kendra Gilbert. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, one, one. Namaste and welcome to N5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida, every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. midnight in the U.K., and 9 a.m. Tuesday morning in Australia. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, and for the next two hours, we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Tonight... Our special guest will be astrologer Tom Kepacha Lesher. But first, I'd like to bring in my co-host, coming to you from Ocala, Florida, licensed massage therapist, energy worker, and artist, Kendra Gilbert. Hi, Kendra. Hey, Greg. How are you tonight? I am doing great. I'm really looking forward to tonight with our, our, our guest, Tom. This dude has got amazing energy. How are you doing? <laughs> doing great. Very excited myself. I am really looking forward to it. And I agree. Awesome energy, wonderful human beings. I'm just, uh, I'm really, I feel very privileged. <laughs> so uh, what's going on in the news tonight? Well, for tonight's news, a uh, new star found and it's headed towards Earth. Well, amateur astronomers are turning their telescopes toward the minor constellation of Delphinius to witness this newly visible nova, which is consistently brightening as it crosses the threshold of the naked eye visibility. A lot of folks are remembering the words of whistleblower Patty Broussard, who said last week in an interview that we would begin to be able to see some sort of planetary body heading toward Earth as early as August 14th. And it just so happens that this was the actual day that the nova was discovered by Koichi Itagaki of Yamagata, Japan. Now, could this be what the Hopi called the Blue Kachina? Could this actually be traveling toward Earth, or is the brightening a common normality for a nova? Will the destruction prophesied throughout history and multiple religious and cultural doctrines of the world be literal? Or will it be the end of life as we know it, the demise of the elite system due to either a new consciousness or energy coming forth? Perhaps it's a global ET disclosure in the form of mass contact, or could it all just be a false flag event attempt to usher in the New World Order? To find this story and more information, visit the N5D website under the news links, and remember, always use your own discernment. Back to you, Greg. Thanks, Kendra. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? <laughs> That's not in the script. No. <laughs> Uh, All right, so uh, just a reminder, N5D.com will be hosting our first annual Return to Atlantis conference here in Sarasota, Florida on the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Lido Key Beach on the weekend of October 4th through the 6th, 2013. We have six amazing speakers lined up, including Lisa Renee, Teal Scott, Laura Eisenhower, Dr. Dream, tonight's guest, astrologer Tom Capacha Lesher, and galactic historian Andrew Bartis, who has the rare ability to read universal and individual Akashic records. And Andrew will be coming back to N5D Radio in the next few weeks as well. Included in this amazing event is a Friday night new moon beach goal activation with Dr. Dream, a Saturday night cosmic reunion beach party catered by Earth Origins, which has amazing holistic food. And on Sunday night, we're all going to meet at the Siesta Key Drum Circle. Our speakers will be featured from late morning until mid-afternoon, so that will leave everyone plenty of time to go sightseeing or just to enjoy the 99% quartz crystal sands here on Sarasota's Gulf Shores. Due to seating limitations, there are only 90 tickets available to this event. And in the event that you cannot attend, we will be live streaming this. So be sure to check it out on that as well. You can find out more information about the Return to Atlantis conference by visiting www.in5devents.com or click the link below this video. And just a reminder, next Monday, Kendra and I will be welcoming contactee 
George Cavasilis to N5D Radio, so be sure to check that out as well. And tonight, right now we're waiting for Tom to call in. He should be in any second now. But we're not going to be doing any personal astrology questions with Tom, but if you have any other questions for him, feel free to call in. Our number is 646-716-8890. So, yeah, uh, Gemini is saying she loves George Cavasilis, and it's going to be a, a blast to have him on. Are you familiar with uh, much of his work, Kendra? Yeah, uh, well, you know, not as much as I probably sh should at this point, but um, it's, uh, it's definitely somebody that I'm very interested in to, uh, you know, I'm going to definitely be doing my research for sure, my homework, as they say. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And I, I just want to personally say I'm, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the Return to Atlantis conference quite a bit. It'll be really nice to be able to get to meet um, Andrew um, after, you know, having him on the show and everything. And I already know, I'm already familiar with uh, Siesta Key Beach, so uh -huh. um, I'm already familiar with the drum circle there. I thought it was awesome. We had such a great time, um, you know, Lars and I, when we, when we came up to see you. And, and uh, that experience in general was just wonderful. It was great energy. So I'm really thinking that this conference is just going to be um, jam-packed with a lot of powerful information and energy, and I'm encouraging anybody out there who has the ability, you've got to try to make it to the event. It's going to be great. So, uh, yeah, as Kendra mentioned, Kendra, her husband Lars, and their son Aiden came down to Siesta Key Beach one night, and we all met at the drum circle. What were your impressions overall of the energy and the whole event? I thought it was great. I, I, I just, you know, when you get into that groove, um, it, it really becomes, it kind of takes you back. I, at least it does me. The drumming circles themselves are just, you know, really powerful. And they do, they kind of take you back in time a little bit, too. You start feeling that uh, that deep, um, I don't know, beat of the human spirit deep inside, you know. And uh, the fact that there were so many people, which was really mind-blowing, because we've been to other um, drum circles in the past, like, you know, um, on Madeira Beach and everything in St. Pete, uh, Clearwater Beach, and I just never really have gotten, um, I've never seen a crowd that large before. And, you know, there's the hoop dancers and, uh, you know, it's just everybody's just beaten, you know, uh, to, to that uh, beautiful melody and the sunset. It's just, it's a really beautiful, clean beach. I was very impressed with it, Greg. And, of course, you were there, so, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, well, it was awesome. <laughs> of course, I was there, you know. I, I live about two miles away from uh, the Siesta Key Drum Circle, and it's an absolute blast. Every time you go there, um, it's kind of like, a freak show, but freaks of a, <laughs> with, with a good word behind it, you know. <laughs> they're, I hope you're not referring to the hoop dancers, Greg. <laughs> no, I'm uh, actually referring to you and Lars. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, act, no, it, it, and, I, and I, I say that with love because these people, uh, they're the kind of people that I, I'm most attracted to. They're the kind of people who aren't afraid to be themselves. This is me no matter what anybody else thinks, and I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do, whether it's uh, dancing, you know, with, with hula hoops or, you know, however they're expressing themselves. It's just a beautiful thing because they're doing it because this is them. They're not doing it to, for any other ulterior reasons and with complete disregard for what anybody else might think about them. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree 100%. Yet when, when uh, you're, you just live your life and, and you do it in love and honesty and you're genuine with people and yourself, it comes out. And you can feel that with other people, too, that you're around. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I know that's the type of energy that's going to be there um, this October. So it's, it's going to rock. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't know. Do we have Tom here yet? Or? Uh, let me go. No. All right. Oh. <laughs> Kendra, would you like to introduce him? It would be my pleasure. Our guest this evening has dedicated over 30 years to the healing and awakening of humanity. He's known for his weekly astrology forecasts on YouTube, the Pele Report, insightful and powerful mantras, kundalini yoga classes, healing festivals and workshops. His genuine love and humor truly speaks to the heart of humanity. We are very honored to have Tom Kaipacha Lesher here with us tonight. Welcome to N5D Radio, Tom. Hey, Tom. Aloha. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I hope I'm coming through okay. Oh, it sounds great from, from my end. How's the, uh, how's the Cape Pache Healing Festival tour going? <laughs> well, we just, uh, we just finished our festival uh, yesterday, but nobody wants to leave, so it, it seems to be uh, going on a little longer than anticipated. <laughs> 
it, it's been an amazing month-long experience now, traveling in four different locations, putting on a, a festival in a different location every weekend, traveling midweek with um, amazing people. Uh, Amazing people from Slovenia, the UK, Australia, you know, they've just come from all over and um, just united their energies and created an experience that people are just healed, transformed, in awe, opened up. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's all about love and it's, it's a heart opening time and it's just been blowing everybody's mind. That's wonderful. And it was wonderful to see you at the Yosetti Ranch in your videos this past week. I mean, it's been nine years since I was last there, and it just looks as beautiful as ever. Um, so, Tom, can you tell us about any of your experiences that you may have had up at the, the, Gilliland, the Gilliland Ranch during the Healing Festival? Well, there's, there's, been, uh, there's been a few, for sure. We've been sky watching with James, and uh, actually have stayed here a little more than two weeks. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he's got, uh, he has a way, this is some kind of a vortex, some kind of a portal where the, the night sky is just moving and alive and, of course, the orbs are all over the place. And Mount Adams is, is also just, like, highly active. It's, I, I, last night, in fact, I was out there looking at it and it just reminded me of the Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember that show, <laughs> you know, but it's just, um, you know, ships just, you know, in and out and in and out like Grand Central Station around here. It's, uh, it's, it's been phenomenal. There was one point where there was a, uh, a, a jet fighter pilot uh, chasing off. Wow. Wow. You know, uh, <laughs> visitor. Um, there's been just, uh, you know, just one sighting after another, night after night. So it's been really amazing. Well, while you're out there, you're going to have to tell James that we want him on Inside D Radio sometime, so. <laughs> right. Yeah, back in, yeah, I mean, just minutes ago, um, I just came back from J James. Like, last night, he's never written a song. He, he's not really a musician. But last night, uh, the words to a song came through him. And the Outback Gypsies, which is this uh, uh, a couple that came from Australia to play at the festival, um, the music came through her, and so this uh, song just manifested. Uh, it's the Anunnaki Return is the name of the wow. song. Um, and yeah, I, I you know I could I, I can't sing it for you, but I wouldn't mind <laughs> the lyrics. Yeah, I was hoping you'd hum a few bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what are some of the lyrics? Oh, darn it. Now I can't find my, I can't find the pen and paper that I put it on. Well, you'll have to put that in your next week Pele report. Yes, it's very good. I, because, he, you know, he just basically went through the whole history. And I don't know how, how familiar your listeners are or how interested they are in the whole history of the Anunnaki. Um, but I could certainly go into that a little bit if you are interested. I know I am. I am too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, you know, basically, and the song goes into this, that, uh, you know, the, 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 the Anunnaki came here. Um, their, their planet was failing. They needed some gold to, you know, to uh, sustain uh, their home planet, and they found hominoids. Uh, James calls them knuckle draggers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they uh, and and so they said, hmm, ha ha. You know, we can bump up the DNA of these, you know, apes, and they can, uh, you know, help us mine the gold. And so that we need for our planet. And so they uh, they basically did that, and um, you know, the, the hominoids then uh, revered them. They were so exalted and excited and happy, and uh, they, they basically saw the Anunnaki's as gods, and God, you know, just God and goddesses. And, and they were then left. 
the Anunnaki left a, a small group of the, you know, to like uh, to 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 master and you know master the situation, take care of the design and and the mining and everything, and that that group that they left behind fell. If you want to consider, you know, falling, it, it, almost like the fallen angels or, or the Luciferic beings or whatever that are referred to in, you know, different religions. There's this, the idea of the fall that happens. Mm -hmm. And they basically um, misused their power and fell into the third dimensional materialistic, uh, you know, greed and power and da 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 da, -da. And, and so, um, you know, so we say some of their, uh, you know, some of their energy is, is still around today. And they also gave the Anunnaki a bad name. <laughs> right? And, and so uh, this song is about, and I have the words for it now, James is saying that now he's being contacted more and more by the, by the original Anunnaki who are back. Wow. To make amends. To you know, to, to correct the situation, yeah, and they're they're just blasting this planet with love energy. They are blasting this planet with this feminine inner sense of you know high vibrational energy, and and it's it's going to assist in the transformation from this old hierarchical energy that they feel somewhat responsible for having left or created, yeah, into uh, this new paradigm. So that, that, that kind of sums it up now, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can read the, uh, you want to hear the, the words for the song? Yeah, definitely. Okay. We built your ancient temples. We came to right a wrong. We left our children to oversee a civilization at its dawn. Our children, they have fallen, forgotten noble virtue. They were left here to serve our seeds we left behind. Like they, those who serve them have fallen just as well. Yet now it is time to awaken divinity standing tall. Slaves were not your owners. We were meant to walk as one. And now we have returned when all is said and done. The tyrant days are over. The separation, greed, and control. It is time to lead yourself from your own heart and soul. We come to awaken heal, and empower. It is written in your prophecies, the budding of the flower. Know that you are divine, seeded from the gods. The waters are a pouring, a love so sublime. To all the children, those young and old, we are now returning as the prophecies have told. We are here to mine the hearts for everlasting gold. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm wondering, how, how, how can people connect with the Anunnaki, and will there be a first contact with them? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, what's, what's really stressed here at East SETI, yes, and, and, and certainly in my own experience in my own life, it is so much more of an inner contact. It's an inner process mm -hmm. of opening. It is, you know, as you connect and open your heart and raise your vibration, you will attract. It's like sending out a tractor beam, <laughs> you know. When you are, you know, when you are able and open and clear, then it's, it, it, and, and it's almost like, how can I say, you know, it's like when, um, 
Well, it's almost like a, an opera singer breaking the glass. You know, when you come, uh, when a high vibration meets a low vibration, the low vibration trembles <laughs> and shakes up and the debris flies, it's like a tornado, and it, and it breaks and shatters and falls apart. Mm -hmm. So when we are met with high vibrational beings, it actually brings up all of our shadows. It brings up all of our fears. It brings up everything that is, you know, of a lower vibration. So if there's to be contact, yeah, you know, the, the, the way is, you know, to really, I, I feel, engage in your own healing process, in your own, you know, uh, raising of your conscious awareness to this perception of ending separation. That that separation is a third dimensional phenomenon, and we are inwardly connecting with our multi-dimensional, higher dimensional selves, and that's where we're going to make the contact initially. And after that and through that, and of course, you know, a lot of the people that come to the ranch, you know, have been doing this, right? And and so it's, it's almost like this place attracts those, you know, individual soul beings that, you know, have, you know, worked or are working actively on raising their vibration. And together, when they unite, it creates a magnetic pull. Like, you know, that's my own. Mm -hmm. Well, as it turned out, we ended up having their DNA as well because they intermingled with the knuckle draggers, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah, he left the out of the song. But <laughs> well, there was now, obviously something attracting them to the knuckle draggers, right? <laughs> <laughs> they must have not have all looked that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... So, in your opinion, do you think the Anunnaki are responsible for the 15% who have RH negative blood? Well, I have not personally made that connection, but I mean, now that you now that you uh, bring it forward, it certainly uh, feels, you know, in alignment. With, hmm. Yeah. And, and Tom, you know, I'm curious to know what your personal opinion is about everybody talking about this, you know, planetary body that's supposed to be coming in. A lot of people are, you know, recognizing this as possibly like the blue kachina from the Hopi, uh, you know, prophecies or Nibiru coming back into our solar system and potentially causing some major event that's going to, you know, change life as we know it. Um, you know, there's people that are talking about changes that happen internally within the body, and then there's actual real physical changes that are going to be taking place to the planet, to the, you know, to the way things are. In your personal opinion, is there anything that you feel that, you know, substantiates that, or is there anything in astrology that actually points to that possibility? Well, there is, yes, indeed. Uh, and it's, you know, it's astrologically connected to a couple of different cycles that are, you know, converging uh, at this time. And, and of course, we, we know that uh, 1221 was this alignment of, uh, you know, the galactic center with our uh, winter solstice point in the northern hemisphere. And that, is, that, was a, that was a point, but when you're looking at 26,000 year cycles and beyond, um, you know, a, a point becomes uh, part of a much larger process. So, you know, it's, it, we can really look at, you know, the years before 2012, the years after 2012 as this, you know, kind of uh, peak time. So, astrologically, the planet Uranus came into an exact square with Pluto in uh, June of 2012. And it's going to go back and forth, these two planets, Uranus and Pluto, uh, back and forth in the square configuration from the middle of 2012 until the spring of 2015. So this is, this is almost a three-year process of, and you know, what that indicates astrologically is, number one, Pluto moving through Capricorn. Pluto is the archetype of Shiva. Death, destruction, removal, 
for transformation to occur, the letting go of the old to make way for the new. It's annihilation of that which is inhibiting, blocking the evolutionary process. And it's moving through the sign of Capricorn, which has to do with external authority, governments, banks, control systems, religions, all these external authorities that so many people have been looking up to, relying upon for their security, for their identity, for their structure. And so this is a time from, you know, Pluto, Pluto spends, you know, there until 2025. Mm -hmm. So we have this removal, this annihilation, this composting, this just, you know, it, 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 this falling apart and decaying of the old patriarchal, hierarchical control systems, governments, financial, religious institutions. And the square to this Uranus, now Uranus is only in the sign of Aries. It went in there in April of 2011. It's going to stay there until 2018. So it's at 12 degrees now. It's almost halfway through. It's a seven-year process. But this square to Pluto going on intensifies it. Uranus is the archetype that I look at as enlightenment, awakening, it rules the third eye, the you know the, the seer, the observer, the Prometheus, the light bearer. Coming through this, you know, the sign of Aries, the first sign of the zodiac. It's a fire sign, and it has to do, interestingly enough, with our instinct, with our bodies, with our sexual appetites, with our hunger, with our desires. Mm -hmm. And it's just this, uh, it is a time now of awakening to the wisdom of the body, to the wisdom uh, that is inherent within us. So there is this whole liberation of the individual that I am my own, I am, I exist. I, I, I have desire and I have instinct, and I am guided from within by my desires, my impulses, my heart force. So Aries is this I do, I am, I go. It's a very powerful it's the warrior. Mm -hmm. So we have this awakening of individuals to their own power. You know, everyone is just like, oh, I want to be free, I want to break free, I want to break out of the chains of limitation. And this is squaring this Pluto force moving through Capricorn. It's just an absolute time of revolution. The last time these planets were together was Uranus was conjunct Pluto in 1965, 1966. It was actually the summer of love. <laughs> And that's actually why I'm doing these healing festivals. It's like summer of love too. <laughs> but you know, it's it's uh, it's actually this, I, I see it as this revolution. This this, uh, but the revolution the, it's a revolution of love. It doesn't necessarily need to go the route of violent, physical, destructive, upsetting. Uh, you know, um, uh, anger, frustration, uh, you, know, uh, you know, with, um, you know, uh, disastrous results for humanity and the planet at large, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't really enjoy or participate, you know, um, well, I try not to, at least, in the whole fear-mongering thing. Sometimes I catch myself, you know, it's like, well, that's a little, you know, negative-sounding. But, you know, it's hard because when you're living in this world and you're looking at things that are happening around you and you're seeing these things taking place, and even though you feel that awakening going on within yourself and you're, you're you know, you're so willing to just let go of all the old crap, all the old stuff, and just embrace the new way of thinking, the new way of love, but you see so many people that are still holding on to all the other crap. It's like, you know, it, it's very frustrating. And, um, you know, because you want to move forward and you feel like somebody's got a hold of your ponytail pulling you back. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, I just was curious to see, though, you know, because there is a lot of people that are talking about, you know, the possibility of this major influence coming in and affecting us to push maybe some buttons or light some fires under some high knees of those that are less willing to, you know, <laughs> yeah. embrace the way of love. That's kind of more or less what I'm wondering it might happen. Maybe, okay, you've had your chance. Now I'm going to give you a swift kick in the britches to get you going, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all I can say is I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is I was so disappointed. I feel like I am still processing and working through my disillusionment and disappointment around 1221 mm -hmm. that it's really hard for me to reach out, you know, for another date or another sign or another, you know, time, you know, and hope and pray that there's going to be, you know, some uh, material, you know, shift and change, you know, in our, you know, in this whole externalized, you know, governmental, hierarchical, social, Pat Patriarchal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, to me, uh, the whole December 21st thing was really a, a huge awakening. So many people, even though they might have expected some, you know, transformational shift into another dimension and whatever, it opened their minds up to the possibility. And they started asking questions, and that just kept leading to a greater and greater awakening. So. To me, you know, when people say nothing happened on December 21st, I'm like, you're crazy. Look at what's going on right now. Yeah. And, you know, the, the best way that I see, you know, the best avenue or process is just uh, I think of the old Indian story of the, you know, of the young brave that went up to the, uh, to the wise elder, uh, the chief of the tribe, and he said, you know, grandfather, I feel like there are many wolves inside of me, each one of them wanting to take over, which one is going to win? Mm. You know, which one is going to gain control of me? And, you know, and, and the grandfather, the chief said, the one that you feed. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, the best way that I can see, I think of Gandhi, I think of it's basically non-participation. I think that the easiest way to make a transition away from these power structures and, you know, these, these control mechanisms that are in place now uh, in so many different ways is just by, you know, they, if we withdrew, if we stopped using our charge cards and we stopped, you know, feeding our mortgages and we stopped, you know, da 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 you know, stop going to church, you know, I, these, you know, these institutions will collapse of their own, you know, it'll just be a natural death process that, you know, there, there's just no energy going there anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's when individual people wake up to their own power, their own creative genius and intelligence, that is really what's going on now for me and for so many people that I see in all these healing festivals is empowerment, self-empowerment makes for individual people who are not seeking out of fear or insecurity these external sources of, you know, form, structure, which end up to be limiting and dominating and manipulating, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it, it's and this of course leads me to this whole you know the astrology I'm working with now is bringing in Black Moon Lilith and it's this uh, this whole feminine uh, energy the reemergence of the feminine and I've been looking at these uh, cycles of uh, the masculine and the feminine rebalancing themselves every 6,500 years. We've been in 6,500 years of patriarchy. Before that was 6,500 years of matriarchy. You know, before that was more, yeah, I mean, you're, you're familiar with the, you know, other ancient, uh, ancient ones. But this, to me, is a time where the, if I look at it, the feminine is 
associated with in the shamanic world, it's the underworld, it's the dark, it's the chaotic, it's the inner world of feeling, of intuition, in, you know, seeing into the invisible, into that which is formless, and has to do with the unconscious and the subconscious. And the, the masculine is the light. In astrology, the, you know, the, it's the upper chakras. It's Neptune and Uranus in astrology. The underworld is Pluto and Chiron. But this upper world is the world of light. It's the positive. It's the organizational. It is the outer, externalized. So we've been in this masculine dominated, you know, conditioning for numbers of lifetimes, numbers of generations, and it has just been really outwardly focused for our security, for our sense of identity, for our power, our sense of self, our yeah, everything. And now it's time to go into the inner world the world of the dark, the world of the feeling, the world of emotion, call it the lower chakras. We have the, you know, the underworld is the three lower chakras. The heart chakra is our middle, it's that connection point between the light and the dark. And we can look at it as terrestrial, extraterrestrial. We can look at it as, you know, in numerous different ways. Inner world, you know, inner earth and, you know, Andromedans and whatever, but um, there's just this whole balance, you know, this whole rebalancing involves an honoring, a respecting, a acknowledging, uh, a perceiving, and integrating our inner subjective, intuitive, feminine nature. You know, I, I think ultimately, though, because we keep going into these cycles, and now that we're at the end of this masculine cycle and we're seeing war and destruction and all this macho BS, eventually we, we go into that feminine cycle, but at the end of that, I'd imagine that there's, there's famine and over-nurturing and starvation, so somewhere we've got to learn how to find a balance. You betcha. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's why I feel like this planet is like first grade, you know, I mean, <laughs> we got a ways to go, man. We, we seem to be swinging from, you know, one extreme back over to the other extreme. I mean, the matriarchy, you know, was, was no paradise either, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So between the Uranus-Pluto square and the Pluto and Capricorn, you're saying that a love revolution is a inevitable, correct? Yes. And the other thing that's going on now is Jupiter. Now, Jupiter went into Cancer in June, and it's going to stay there uh, until June of 2014. And so it's creating an opposition to Pluto and a square to Uranus, which in astrology is called a T-square. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Black Moon Lilith is also approaching uh, that T-square, and that's going to go on really from now until uh, next May. And, and, and this just, you know, let's look at those archetypes, you know. Astrology is just blending archetypes. We want to blend together this Jupiter. So this Jupiter in Cancer is saying that, you know, Jupiter is expansion and evolution and growth and understanding the meaning of life, the search for the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant. Where is it to be found from June of 13 to June of 14? In the sign of Cancer. And the sign of Cancer is the womb. Yeah? It's the mother. It's the breast. The breasts. Yeah? It's nurturing. It's my innermost needs. My little child. This is the time, you know, where our greatest expansion is through inner listening. Inner listening to our feelings and feeling our feelings. And this is what is going to give us this sense of comfort. I mean, Jupiter in Cancer is just like, I am loved. I feel good. 
Cancer is feeling. Jupiter is good. I feel good. This is a time of this, these, you know, inner feelings of me nurturing myself and making myself feel good actually gives me the power and gives me that, you know, it's like the sense of well-being doesn't need to be sought after in the outside world or ingested as, you know, some, you know, drug, alcohol, food, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know what, I already have inside myself to be content. And, and, and this, you know, this is really the, you know, the more people can tap into that inner feeling of well-being, the more they are going to break through and break out of the box and the chains and the jobs and the system and the, yeah, everything that is, you know, holding, stifling, smothering their creative self-expression. So it's really a very, uh, it's a very powerful time now. Black Moon Lilith is there also at the same time. And that, and I do whole weekend workshops on Black Moon Lilith. I don't know how much into astrology you want to go. Are you guys still there? Oh, I'm sorry. I was on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, as far as you want to bring us. Well, gosh, I can go into the whole mythology of Black Moon Lilith. And I'm looking forward to coming over there to Florida to the N5D and uh, discussing some of this uh, same, uh, you know, some of these archetypes and mythology and stories of the inner unconscious dynamics of the human process. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I, I'm so excited about that whole N5D Return to Atlantis event anyway. Is, you're totally going to dig this place to begin with, with the 99% quartz crystal sands and just the energy here is, is to me, it's off the charts. But I, I have a feeling that Jupiter and Cancer is going to come into play with the collapse of religion. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the <sin of> the <laughs> this uh, this story, uh, you know, is is actually, you know, this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it like it goes up to twenty degrees Cancer, it goes retrograde, and comes back again next spring. So that's why I see this kind of nine month period. Uh, you know, in the, the summer and the spring of fourteen as being kind of a rebirthing process, and we're going to just kind of emerge into a new uh, sense of, uh, you know, creative self-expression when Jupiter goes into Leo next summer. It's interesting in astrology, they've got the moon and Venus are the two symbols of the, of the feminine, and they're both soft and gentle, you know, the moon is either the child or the mother, and Venus is the mate and the partner. But when you get into Black Moon Lilith, you know, the magician, the doctress, the powerful feminine energy that is, uh, you know, scary to the masculine. In the ancient days, Lilith was a handmaiden of Inanna, and she would bring the men into the temples for sacred sexual initiation. And then it was... You know, so she's this ancient goddess. She lived in the, in the tree trunk. And the snake wove its way through her roots, and the bird of paradise lived in her branches. She symbolizes this trunk, our body, that is the connection between the upper and the lower. So she is this sensuous, physical nature being connected like with the Elfin world or Anastasia or the inner earth folks or she is this very earthy, sensuous, sexual, powerful snake energy. And when the patriarchy came along, we have Adam and Eve, she was the first wife of Adam. And Adam wanted her to lay beneath him. So here's this ancient wise goddess, you know, that has been a teacher, is now asked to lay beneath and diminish herself, you know, in regards to the masculine. And she said no. She walked out and she left the 
Garden of Eden, she left Adam and went out by the Red Sea. Adam complained to God, Yahweh, the Elohim, the masculine patriarchal God at that time, or the patriarchy. And God, that God sent out three angels to the Red Sea to get her back. She refused. And they said, we will destroy 100 of your offspring every day that you refuse to return to Adam. And this is where the suffering and the pain and the rejection that's associated with the feminine and the dominance of the masculine of killing the offspring of the feminine is, is very symbolic of the mind or the mental or the masculine thinking killing and destroying the easy of you know the, the wellspring of creativity of human beings. And so the story goes on then that in the in the old days they even had amulets that people would wear to ward off Lilith because she married the devil. She was a seductress. She made men come in their sleep. She killed babies. She, you know, destroyed priests you know, from honoring their vows. Uh, she, you know, she became this whore and, and was very much, um, you know, the scapegoat and the shadow and the devil of the patriarchy. And this is, you know, this is the way that it has now been for 6,500 years of patriarchal conditioning. And some of my work with astrology is working with this archetype, saying it's time to bring her back out away from the Red Sea, to stop killing her offspring, to bring her back into the Garden of Eden, which can be likened to our conscious awareness, and reintegrate this aspect, this powerful, sensuous, physical beingness, earthiness, Maybe it's the eight. Maybe it's the knuckle dragger. <laughs> you know, some of our power is in our knuckle dragging. <laughs> you know, that we have surrendered or given up. You know, to the you know to to the ETs or the people in power or the religious uh, you know godheads or whatever. We've just surrendered so much of our uh, creative uh, you know capacity. Um, you know, and then sinners and, and punished and victims. And, I mean, this is all the end of victim consciousness. And, and that's what makes me feel like when they talk about, you know, Nibiru or the, you know, the aliens coming with ill intent or that we're going to need to, you know, I mean, this is all just a bunch of stories. I think it's all just kind of more perpetrating the old fear-based, you know, um, I don't know, it's like, different means or tools of suppression mm -hmm. of the human race, which we're now breaking out of. Yeah. 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 The, the programming that we've all been receiving over the centuries, being told that there's going to be this event. The Bible talks about Armageddon, and we have the, all the different other, you know, prophecies about doomsdays and the end of, you know, this world. And, yeah, there seems like there, in all of them there, there's that, you know, one event that's just going to end it all. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know now, so you're 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 also uh, obviously um, you know it's, you do you do work a lot with metaphors and metaphorical references and stuff and stories, and I think you know that's really interesting. Um, but now, how how do we take like the story of the Anunnaki and tie that in with? everything else, like when we're talking about the story of Black Moon Lilith, how, how would that integrate in with the story of the Anunnaki? I mean, like, Adam, you have Adam and, you know, there's the Adam and Eve, and, okay, so if, if they came, if, it, if the Anunnaki came here and found the knuckle draggers and um, somehow, you know, created the human, you know, that we are today or, or had some play in that, then, you know, when did that take place? Is that before Adam and Eve? Is that after Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. right. There's a lot of holes and a lot of stuff that I've always been trying to put together in my head. So when do you, what's the starting point in your opinion? How do you think it all started? Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, 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 I haven't done too much uh, linkage between these two. I work so much with the person. You know, I do mm -hmm. personal 
counseling, and I, I look at where Lilith is in your birth chart, you know, so that you can uncover your own particular, you know, inner dynamic. So I don't so much with the mundane astrology or, or with, with, you know, the external situation. But what I would say is the way that the linkage that I see, okay, is, that, you know, the fallen angel, you know, that speak of in the Bible, or, you know, it's, it's, it's this great fall. And I think that that fall does have to do with the beginning of the patriarch. And, 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 of course, we know that the, you know, the Anunnaki were here long before 6,500 years ago, which was kind of the externalization, okay, of that, of these patriarchal forms and, you know, socio-political institutions. But it is this idea, you know, that there is a, whether it's the Illuminati or, the, you know, the reptilians or just this control group that has been running the planet now has gotten stronger and stronger and more out of control and more out of control in the last 6,500 years since these externalized hierarchical patriarchal you know forms of control and and of course now it's even getting more intense with Monsanto Corporation and the banks and you know it's just it's now it's kind of infiltrating every aspect of life, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, so, you know, I would say that uh, you know even during the, the matriarchal times, you know, which preceded the patriarchy, and if we look at these, you know, ancient Sumeria and, and, and Gilgamesh, those those ancient times, you know. We have to tie it in with Atlantis and Lemuria and, and go pretty far, you know, back into these uh, different epochs. And I'm I haven't really, you know, explored. I I'm, I wouldn't call myself a historian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm, if anything, I'm more of a futurian. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was just kind of curious though because. You know, when you when you personally hear the stories of the Anunnaki, when you're personally hearing the stories of all the prophecies and stuff like that, how, I mean, you 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 are an astrologer, of course. I just wanted to understand how you what you do with that information. Do you just look at it as a as a story that maybe could have been, would have been, or is it something more? You know, how do you digest that information, and oh. and how do you look at it? Oh yeah, no, I'm totally. I'm totally in alignment with this. I mean, I feel that I feel the reality. I feel the truth of you know of what I spoke, you know, mm -hmm. personally. And I, but, but you see, I'm an optimist. I, I think you know. I think it's great. I've been connecting with the ETs for many, many years. I, I first opened up to channel the ETs in 1980. And, you know, I've, I've gone in and out with my uh, relationship uh, with channeling and with working with them, trusting them or not. <laughs> but I do feel that this is a time, and the Anunnaki are returning, that because what? You know, the quarantine on planet Earth has been lifted. As, and that's how, what I think the big thing was with uh, 1221, 12, mm -hmm. was that, you know what? Now is the time. This is the time when, you know, whether they're called angels or, you know, nature spirits or multidimensional beings or extraterrestrials, this is the time when we are going to be contacting, interacting, witnessing, seeing, hearing, seeing, listening inwardly and externally to, you know, higher sources of intelligence that are going to give a jolt to the, to the human species evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be totally positive. It's going to be totally awesome. I, I feel like we're coming out of separation consciousness. Mm -hmm. We're breaking out of just a, a strictly mundane third dimensional awareness. And we're going to be opening up to the fourth and fifth dimensions. We're going to be stepping outside of our normal realities. And it's just a super exciting time of, 
of birthing into, I feel like we are chickens that have been under the incubator, like we hatched too soon. And we've, mm -hmm. been, and we've been under these lights <laughs> so that we could dry off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? And, you know, and, and we, we're, we're now ready, our wings are dry and we're, we're ready to fly. I, I have such a, you know, I am so excited about the future. You know, I think this is all fantastic. And, and it just mm -hmm. coincides with the Anunnaki coming back to straighten out uh, the mess that they left on this planet. It mm -hmm. could be exactly coinciding with this awakening and liberation. Uh, you know, from the oppressive uh, patriarchal, uh, you know, structures. Yeah, I'm I'm really ready for it to fall myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. That man, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But, but my whole thing is, it's got to start within. It's got to start at home. It's got to, you know, it's uh, we are our own healers. We are our own liberators again. You know, I see this tendency for people, just like they would rely on, uh, you know, the United States government to save them from the Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. You know, we can also rely on either, you know, benevolent or, you know, uh, not, you know, violent, uh, you know, uh, ETs. You know, it's like there's just this kind of um, the best thing that I feel we can overcome is our tendency to seek redemption or salvation or some kind of external source of power to do what we personally need to do to mm -hmm. come into this state of self-realization. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like I don't even want to um, build too much energy around what's going on out there or up there or, you know, uh, what's going to happen outside myself so much as, you know what, you know, this is a time for me to work with my childhood patterns and my emotional blocks and my sexual relationship issues and, you know, my financial lack of abundance. And, I mean, as we, you know, get rid of, and purge, cleanse, release, divest ourselves of so much of this uh, codependency on, you know, external sources uh, for joy, contentment, and satisfaction. You know, that is really, uh, you know, and that's why I, I teach Kundalini Yoga. I, I work uh, so much with, uh, you know, uh, shamanic breath work and uh, meditation and journeying and you know using a, a you know interdisciplinary approach that's what these healing festivals are all about is giving people ecstatic dance and you know movement and getting you know getting into your body and expanding mm -hmm. consciousness these are all ways and means I feel that are really much more beneficial than trying to intellectually with our left brain, which is, you know, it's this old masculine approach of the head on the stick, mm -hmm. you know, of calculating, uh, you know, analyzing, figuring, getting the dates and the time schedules and how it's going to happen and blah, 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 blah. All this mental activity is such a distraction, you know, uh, which is actually just, you know, it's taking people away from what is actually going to empower them, strengthen them, and make the change happen. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Tom, uh, Pluto is currently in retrograde with Capricorn. It's actually, yeah, I, I believe it went retrograde in April of this mm -hmm. year. What influences will that have now that now that it's gone retrograde? Yeah, it's very interesting because you can take these signs and divide them into three. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. the, 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 the deacon. And it's, again, it's like Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. You know, it's the law of the three. It's like, so Pluto comes in 
you know, and it, and it goes up to, you know, uh, 10, 11 degrees, and, and now it's retrograde at 9 degrees, you know, 13. It's going back, and it's, it's remaining in this first third of, of the, you know, of the sign, of the archetype. And, it's, and then it's going to be next spring that it goes, you know, uh, forward into the second. You know, and then and then uh, actually we're going to have our the United States is going to have their um, Pluto return. You know, the United States was uh, it has Pluto in Capricorn. It was born in 1776. Mm -hmm. Pluto is going once around, and for its first time, it's going to return to its uh, you know where it was uh, for our nation uh, you know, in around 2020. But uh, to get back to your question, this, this retrograde, this retrograde is a time these, these outer planets go retrograde when the Earth is passing them by. It's just like you're passing a car on the freeway. It looks like it's going backwards. That's the retrograde phenomenon. What it means is that the Earth is closer to Pluto than ever before because it's, you know, it's coming around and passing it by. And so this actually increases the intensity of the planet. So when you have retrograde planets in your chart, it is that you want to intensely personalize that energy. So to me, this retrograde Pluto uh, not only signifies you know, the number of beings that wish to incarnate you know, while Pluto is retrograde, it's an intense time of transformation on a more internalized, you know, retrograde is reflect, review, redo, reorganize, restructure. It's re, 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 re. Just think of all the re's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's feminine. We see. <laughs> you know, receptive. <laughs> so, you know, this Pluto retrograde is a time when we are, you know, it's a time for us to personally, inwardly, you know, uh, do this interchange so that when Pluto goes direct, it's more of a masculine. So the direct action, you know, and these planets are pretty much retrograde half the time. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, you know, they go retrograde about half the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, inwardly do your transformation, do your integration, so that when Pluto goes direct, then, you know, it's, it's time to, you know, make the change, you know, act out, you know, outwardly, you know, radiate the new inner understanding that you have cultivated during the retrograde process. You know, the uh, the U.S. government bought several billion rounds of hollow point ammunition, which according to the Geneva Convention are illegal in international warfare, which means they can only use them domestically. And this is not fear-mongering whatsoever, but my, my question would be, do those who are in power right now, how, how much do they rely on astrology and knowing that this energy is coming around for the whole Pluto and Capricorn thing, and the last time it was here was during the American and French revolutions, back in the 1700s? Well, you know, my feeling is that they are scared shitless. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too, brother. <laughs> you know, I mean, they know. <laughs> they know what's coming, man. That's why they're buying this stuff. Yep. So while we're all, most of us are thinking that, you know, it's going to be them attacking us, maybe it's them worrying that we're all going to wake up and come after them. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, I think we lost Tom, Greg. Uh, hang on. All right, we'll get him back here in a sec. And we're just going to bring Tom back in. Give us a second here. Apologize for the delay. Yes, I, I, I think that they're sabotaging our call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? We start talking about the government and what happens? <laughs> they scared. <laughs> Hello, NSA. Let's all wave one finger to them. I know. I mean, Especially when I feel like I'm a sitting duck out here on the range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you got some extraterrestrial help over there, brother. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank God, man. And, and of course, we're certainly being watched, you know, closely by 
many powers that be. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we're you know we're really we? this yeah this, this the, the idea of the the resistance to evolution. Uh, there you know it's it's just that these uh, you know these folks are beings, however we want to look at them, in positions of power and control and domination. Um, I mean, my personal opinion is it's, it's, it's going to take, you know, some very strong um, forces of change to uh, kick their butts out of there, you know. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I, ideally, I, you know, I encourage, you know, the Gandhi approach, you know, of nonviolent, you know, uh, resistance. But, of course, you know, that, that took millions and millions of people. I mean, you know, it, it took a huge percentage of the population to achieve that revolution. And, you know, personally, I don't see the numbers. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not seeing a huge percentage of our population that says, oh, yeah, you know, I don't need my iPhone or my iPad or my charge card or my, you know, that, that, you know my corporate job and my cubicle at the bank. I, I, I'm not seeing that. So, uh, you know, I almost... That, that's what makes me want to call out for, you know, some higher intelligence and some help from, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the other dimensional beings to, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, help the process uh, along a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm kind of was hoping for, too, is like, you know, I keep seeing all these little signs and these little hints of possibly something's coming, and it's like, oh, well, maybe this is it, maybe this is it, maybe this is the, the, the major bonfire beneath the butt <laughs> moment, you know? And, you know, I, I just I have to keep on, um, you know, I don't know, doing like everybody else is doing, just sitting back and waiting and doing everything that we can to, to just make it through. But, uh, you know, and I've always appreciated your work, like I was saying before, because you encourage people to go within themselves to find that inner knowing or awareness. So it's, that I think that's a wonderful, um, you know, advice that you could give to people right now is just go, go inside yourself. Now, you work with kundalini energy, Tom, and one of the questions that I had to you about this was, because I've done research and I, I've heard people say that you have to kind of be prepared to handle this type of energy um, that it can actually cause harm or, or even kill you if you, you know, do it incorrectly. Is, is this true or is this just nonsense? Well, it is a death force. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, you know, it, it rises up and basically um, kills whatever is non-essential and not part of you. Okay. And if you are strongly invested in aspects or elements of yourself that are not you, <laughs> then you you will become destabilized. So yes, it uh, you know when it sneaks up on people, uh, it has you know been known to create a lot of you know um, I don't want to say insanity, but certainly mental instability or some you know some really highly charged emotional imbalances and yeah. So you know that's why I work very much with uh, Yogi Bhajan and you know he he uses specific sound technology, specific mantras, you know, you, you do this for two and a half minutes, and then you do this for 30 seconds, and you hold this finger to that place, and I mean, it, it's very, you know, and it's very important to follow each Kriya. Yeah, I mean, well, it obviously has to be a pretty powerful thing, so, I mean, you, you, you know, <laughs> So now we we have watched you. When I say we, I'm referring to my husband and I. Your videos, your Pele reports, for about two years now, and we notice that you wear a lot of jewelry. <laughs> Are there specific stones or pieces that you wear on specific areas or fingers of your body that mean something or have a certain purpose? And are you willing to share any of that with us? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, it definitely does. Uh, I do. I uh, use the different uh, stones and the different uh, rings and energies that I've gotten in different countries and different places, but, you know, uh, from different people at different points of, you know, and I, I look at the astrology of the time when I, when something comes to me, and yeah, the different necklaces, I've got, you know, uh, some goose beads that, you know, uh, were given to me by, a, you know, uh, a married uh, uh, shamanic couple 
that who had been married for 70 years, and they, they made that, uh, you know, a necklace for me. And I've got different rings of, you know, the lion and the dolphin, um, you know, uh, together, coming together that I wear on my son finger. Uh, each, you know, each, each finger has an astrological, you know, planetary connection as well as, uh, you know, meridian, uh, the, you know, the Chinese meridian. But mm -hmm. I don't know if I really want to go into explaining, you know, each ring and necklace or whatever. But. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, as, as also, I mean, I'm, I'm a massage therapist myself. I consider myself, um, you know, part of the healing community. Now, I guess maybe what I would like to also ask you is, is that, you know, when, when you are in a session with, um, a, 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 you know, a client, um, when you take on that responsibility, and if you're using any stones, which I don't know if you use stones in your sessions or not, but do you focus mainly on, on yourself and, and the stones that help you work better, or are you trying to, or do you look at your client and try to use stones that would help them individually? What, where's your focus at in your sessions? Is it, is it on yourself to be the conduit to help your, your patient or your client, or is it, are you focused mainly on them and what they need? Uh, I am I am focused on being a conduit. Mm -hmm. I uh, you know my my mantra that I use before every class and every session and every chart interpretation is that um, and this was given by Yogi Bhajan actually with the Kundalini Yoga. It is that uh, you touch the thumb to the little finger. I am not a man. Mm -hmm. To the fourth finger, I am not a woman. The thumb to the third finger. I am not a self, the thumb to the index finger, I am not a human, the thumb to the sky, I am a healer teacher. Mm -hmm. So my focus is to get Tom Lesher, Kai Pacha, or whoever out of the way, out of the room, out of mm -hmm. the, you know, out of the channel. So that the you know uh, you know the, the best uh, service can be you know brought you know the best energy can be brought through using kind of my body as a vessel or an instrument of uh, a greater intelligence to work with the client. Thank so you for sharing that. You know, as as soon as you post a video on YouTube, I post it on In Five D Alternative News along with my Facebook page and the In Five D page. They're, they're, you're the real one. <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> you know, there's so many amazing astrologers out there, but there's only a handful that I follow. Who are some of your favorite astrologers, and what astrologers influenced you? Uh, well, I would say Jeffrey Wolf Green is my primary uh, teacher. Uh, he's uh, he started the Pluto uh, School of Evolutionary Astrology, um, and uh, Stephen Forrest. Uh, worked with him uh, for a number of years. They were called the Pluto Brothers. Uh, I really appreciate both of them. Uh, and then I've also worked quite a bit with Daniel Giamario, who uh, is the founder, whatever, of shamanic astrology. So uh, those are pretty much the, the three. I was kind of buddy-buddy with Maurice Fernandez, another uh, evolutionary astrologer mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I've known for a, a long time, uh, but those are probably, and of course, I mean, going back, you know, I mean, in the 70s, I was reading Dane Woodyer and uh, Stephen Arroyo and Mark Edmund Jones and, you know, some other, you know, authors that have influenced on me. Well, speaking of reading, you know, if, if someone wanted to learn about astrology, what books would you recommend? Well, I recommend all, uh, Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Wolf Green's uh, you know uh, Pluto, the Evolution of the Soul, uh, Volume One and Volume Two. Hmm. Volume One is almost like the Bible or whatever. Uh, uh, Daniel G. Mario wrote the Shamanic Astrology Handbook, and you can do anything by Stephen Forrest to, to, to just get into astrology. The Inner Sky uh, is uh, is a very good book that just kind of goes through you know. Planet sign houses aspects. Mm -hmm. The piece of the puzzle. Okay, and and for those who are interested in learning about astrology, can you explain the importance 
of houses in your birth chart? Well, I, I, the way that I look at it, I look at it like the, uh, the, the, the planets are what we could call psycho-spiritual functions. They, they, you know, we all have a Mars. Yeah, we all have this masculine God within that, has, that is desire. And it's a psycho-spiritual function that, you know, that, that keeps, you know, it's always there. And it works through the signs. So they, the planet can be like a light, and the sign is the filter or the color of the light. So the Mars in Pisces is going to be completely different than Mars in Aries or Mars in Leo or Mars in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. We have 12 different ways of doing that. And then the houses are the stage. So in the play of life, we have, you know, the light and their colors, and the and the and the stage is where it happens. So it's it's where the houses, you know, will say where something is going on. So when you have a lot of planets, you know, in a house, or you know, just you, you use the houses to to um, determine, you know, the the area of life experience that is being. Uh, you know, affected at any given time. Mm -hmm. So the the houses are basically aspects of ourselves, is what you're saying, though, right? Well, it's more the environment. Okay. You know, and how that inter interplays then? Yeah, you know, so it's it's kind of where the rubber hits the road. That you know, your ascendant changes a degree every four minutes. You get this new sign on on the rising sign every two hours. So your houses change very rapidly. It's the most personal part mm -hmm. of the chart, you know, is, is the house location of the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's done to the same degree for everybody born that day, but it's going to be in a different house, you know, every two hours. How important are the retrograde planets on a person's birth chart? Well, like, yeah, I just uh, I visited that retrograde a little while ago. What I see that is that the retrograde planets indicate a psycho-spiritual function that wants to be personalized, individualized, um, you know, really um, kind of rediscovered in a unique way. So a retrograde Mercury is, I think, differently than other people. Retrograde Venus, I relate. My relationships need to be different than the norm. Yeah, Mars retrograde, yeah, I, I don't just spontaneously, instinctively act. I, I reflect and I hold back, so I, I don't do the masculine the way that most normal people do. It's, it's this, uh, it's revolutionary, it's rebel, it's uh, revolt. So these retrograde planets, you know, uh, uh, you know, indicate aspects of the human being that that particular soul wants to individualize and do differently. So, those if you got a lot of retrograde planets. You know, you are, you know, the bringer of a new perception, a new reality, a new paradigm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm a Virgo. I have Mercury and, um, you know, of course, Mercury retrograde happens, I think, to everybody. But I feel like my world's collapsing when it happens because it's my ruling planet. So, uh, yeah, very interesting information for sure. Um, now, we have actually got a question um, from uh, Sean Cohen in the chat room. And she says, Hey, Tom was here in London working at the special yogurt, yo yogurt, yeah, <laughs> yogurt center, doing personal sessions. You like yogurt? Um, I also worked there on occasion and was wondering if he enjoyed his time here in London and what does he see for the UK, astrologically speaking? Oh God, I love London and I love the UK and I can't wait to get <laughs> back there. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm jealous because I've never got to go. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny because I never thought I would even bother with England. It's just cloudy. I'm a, uh, kind of a sunny, tropical guy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I thought, you know, it was kind of stuffy and London was just going to be, yeah, I don't know, Victoria, I think of the Queen and blah, blah, blah. But I got there and the place is just like an international hubbub of, you know, just the, the variety and the yeah, expansiveness and the, the, the people were great. I, I love London. And then... But of course, I go outside to Glastonbury and some of these other places, and England just like, it felt to me like I've been there many times before. It felt like home very much. I, I felt like I, driving through the countryside, I was just waiting for King Arthur to come riding over one of those green hills, you know. <laughs> it's just like Avalon all over the place. I, I can't wait to get back there, and I also want to get up to Ireland and Scotland and Wales. I mean, that, that whole place is so magical. I sat in a crop circle, and oh, yeah, I mean, the energy is so, and, and they are so into astrology. So my, I've got, like, as many listeners in the U.K. as I do in the U.S. <laughs> you know, it's like astrology is way big over there, so it was awesome. That's wonderful. You know, I mean, all throughout history, we've had such influential and enlightened people. I mean, we've had Tesla, Walter Lyle Russell, uh, Marcus Manilas, Tom Ber Thomas Burgoyne. I mean, you've got these huge list of people, and even more people than we that we still don't even know existed, and because they've gone through such persecution and, and basically been placed in the shadows, you know, just to keep us, you know, from knowing that they exist. Um, how much do you feel that these influences um, will, you know, come out and start ushering us into the new age of Aquarius, and how much do you feel will be based on new understandings and research? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the age of Aquarius. Uh, you know, we've got uh, 2,160 years of, you know, major advances in science and technology and, you know, some extraterrestrial intelligence, you know, coming around. Mm. to help out, you know, um, and yet it's, for me, I feel, and this is just me personally, I'm kind of going a little bit in the opposite direction. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm moving to Costa Rica. Oh, and, wow. Uh, I'm learning Spanish, and I'm going to be doing much more uh uh, plant medicine, connecting with Pachamama, going down to Brazil and Peru, and and just living in the jungle and the tropics, and uh, working so much with nature. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's just me and my elfin uh, roots. Uh, James was telling me that uh, you know I have these fifth dimensional guides from inner Earth uh, that I guess are kind of rare or something. And, um, you know, I'm really working very much with uh, Earth energies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, my own personal feeling is that so much of our process now is, you know, connecting with the feminine, with the Earth and the water. In the stars, the feminine is the Earth and the water. And, and yeah, we've got this fire and air, uh, masculine. Mm -hmm. Of course, Aquarius is an air sign. It has to do with the intellect and the genius and the, you know, the, the global perspective. But uh, I just want to, um, I don't know, I suppose in a way maybe it's balancing uh, Aquarius Leo. Mm -hmm. uh, Leo is the lion in the jungle. Uh, you know, with that Aquarius, the sophisticated aristocrat and, uh, you know, detached scientist that you know, could actually blow up the planet. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's a nice bedtime story for you. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. <laughs> uh, go to sleep. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> uh, this is a funny thing, right? I, I just bought some property in, uh, in, this, uh, in this community right, of uh, these uh, back-to-nature, sustainable, you know, buildings and building materials and recycled roads, and we're going to recycle our sewage and, you know, and grow all this organic food and everything. But what? 
one of the things that really turned me on was that they have, you know, fiber optic uh, high-speed internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, you know, so I'm going to be out there in the in the middle of nowhere, totally hooked up to everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do so much of my work on Skype and on the internet, and uh, I mean, I'm a total, you know. Um, Tech, you know, technological, you know, and I, I, I'm an electronics engineer. I used to design computers mm -hmm. before I got into astrology full time. And, you know, so it's, yeah, I think that, I think ideally these, you know, these scientific advances, you know, serve the individualization process and, the, you know, the, the internet is just like this whole means and way of, you know, free part of a part of the liberation process mm -hmm. and of course informing people you know of stuff that they're not going to get you know otherwise in other ways and so I think there is going to be you know uh, many 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 more breakthroughs and of course free energy and you know yeah I think there's huge major technological advances that are going to assist in the mm -hmm. whole process here. Yeah, and the, the banksters and the corps, they're all kicking and screaming because they don't want it to happen, obviously, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, it is what it is. They better jump on board or, I don't know, jump off the planet. <laughs> yeah. do, you, now, do you personally feel that, you know, humanity is going to continue to be somewhat guided or directed um, by something or someone or some type of, I mean, do, do you think that we're still going to be guided or will we actually be free of that type of, of control and babysitting, I guess, is what I, my question is. It's like we've always seemed to have to be watched and looked out after and made sure we're, you know, in check. I mean, is that eventually, do you think, going to stop happening to us and we're really going to have the bell jar removed off the top and be able to just do what we want to do? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Well, I know. It's a double-edged sword because you've got that duality thing going. So it's like, but who's watching out for us, Tom? I mean, what, in your opinion, who, who's out there making sure that, you know, we're... Uh, we might screw up the whole Milky Way. There you go. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, who's out there making sure that that stuff doesn't happen? Is, is that your opinion that maybe it's the Anunnaki that, you know, that, and that's the reason why they're returning to, uh, to, uh, to check and see maybe how close we are to... Blowing well, ourselves my, up. <laughs> my, my understanding is that we are mature enough, evolved, you know, uh, old enough, uh, and ready. It's almost like 2012 was a graduation where we are, uh, you know, uh, being kind of inducted into the Federation, you know, into the Galactic Federation. Mm -hmm. There's a, a Federation of Planets of about, what, are the, what they got, 450 planets or something in there now? So I, I, I feel like, you know, we're just, we're expanding, you know, just like the kid goes from grade school to high school to university to, you know, you, you get more and more and more, uh, you know, power and creative uh, free expression mm -hmm. uh, within a greater, you know, organization or organism. I think we're kind of stepping off, out of, you know, this kind of... Um, you know, national or even global, and we're and we're getting into a you know a, a federation of planets that's going to uh, give us you know more more freedom, more freedom of expression, more you know power to create what we uh, you know what we desire. But you know, as far as you know getting a license or just getting, you know, absolute, you know, no more, uh, no more guidance or, or no more uh, boundaries. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think we're ready for that. In the, in the, like I said, I still feel like this planet is like first grade. Mm -hmm. So, so even after this global awakening event, uh, where the masses are, are awakening and everything, you're still feeling that you know we're still gonna see, and that's where I'm kind of wondering because right now everybody's like got that major problem with wanting to be the head honcho in control. 
So it's like who's going to be the one that's going to be ushering us into this awakened, you know, way of life? Who's going to be the one to control? Because I certainly hope it's not the Obama administration. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. indeed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think there, I mean, part of it is, you know, just having spent a lot of time down here in Costa Rica, it is kind of interesting that, um, and what I'm, what I'm really looking forward to is this uh, international, it is more of a global approach, and they really look at the United States and, you know, and, and the North American people as living in kind of a bubble, like, like they have like this higher supreme power or control or it, it's it's very interesting there's kind of a mentality there's an American mentality yeah uh, and maybe it's even just the northern hemisphere but I feel like um, there's there's way more going on than is even kind of really talked about or um, focused on um, in America, I'd like, I mean, what I could see is, you know, the, the, the fall and the breakdown of America as a superpower. And ideally what I, you know, what, what, what I would kind of see is more of, you know, this matrix, you know, made up of, um, you know, many, many different networks and much smaller groups, but interconnected you know, through the technology. But none of this bureaucratic, massive, monster, one, you know, uh, you know, one agency or one government, you know, running the lives of, you know, millions or billions of people. It's actually, I feel like there's a decentralization, you know, that, that and there's going to be the spring up more of grassroots communities that have their own you know, individual uh, forms of expression, and and there's not so much, um, you know, conforming to and having huge numbers of people conform to particular codes of behavior or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm seeing a lot of people that are just packing up and moving there from the United States, and actually, not not just from the U.S., but from all over. Costa Rica seems to be a hot spot for the the spiritually awakened. Uh, there is there's a lot going on down there, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few, there's a few live volcanoes, uh, you know, there also. Which uh, I moved from Hawaii. I moved from one volcano to another. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I like to be on the edge. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it seems pretty exciting, you know, just that whole area to me, just there, there is some kind of energy that's going on right there, and uh, there's a reason why all these people are moving there, and if I didn't have a 19-year-old a, a daughter, <laughs> I'd probably go there myself. Uh, yeah, well, that's when I, uh, you know, I, I have uh, three daughters, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, when they uh, left home and went off, that's when I, uh, you know, got freed up and was able to uh, relocate as much as I can now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, Jupiter goes retrograde in Gemini on October 4th. Can you explain to our listeners what that means to you and to us as a collective? Yeah, sure. You know, it's, it goes up to about 20 degrees of cancer, and then it's going to go retrograde in October and, you know, uh, come back into that T-square because, uh, you know, Pluto is now at 9 and Uranus is at 12. And, you know, Jupiter is, you know, like today it's at 11. So it's going, it, it's like passing through 9, 10, 11, 12. It's, it's doing this whole T-square thing right now. Mm -hmm. And then it goes all the way up to 20 degrees. It kind of, it's like the heat gets lowered, turned off, right? It's like right now, this, this month, you know, of the late July and early August was just like this kaboom, like um, like getting a shot, you know, like we just got a shot of, you know, uh, some new inspiration or new ideas or new healing or, you know, uh, new feelings, new needs. And, and then we have this time 
you know, after October, it goes retrograde for about five months, and it's time to integrate. It's time to, you know, okay, I've got this new idea or this new impulse or this, you know, new house or whatever. It's time for me to um, invest myself in it. You know, it, it's like, a, you know, the seed is sown now, and then the farmer goes back and waters it and weeds it and cares for it. So we've got these new impulses that came in and are, you know, are coming in like right now as we speak for another week or two. And, and, and then, you know, when it goes retrograde in October, it's going to come back to 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. And, and we're going to get more, yes, of, you know, in December it, it reconjoins, you know, with Black Lilith. And it continues on, you know, to create more of the C square early next year. But um, so to answer your question, you know, that that retrograde, process, like I say, is it time to um, nurture, integrate, feed, strengthen our own feeling nature? This is in the sign of Cancer, which is the sign of the nonconformist. Yeah? <laughs> That's most of us. <laughs> if you know any cancer, you know, it's like I'm going to get out of bed when I want to get out of bed. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late for the bus, but I didn't feel like, you know, going to school today. And, you know, it's just my feelings, you know, matter. My feelings count. I go to the beat of my own drummer. My feelings are my inner drummer. And this is the time of this Jupiter in Cancer you know, of breaking out of this need to conform. And it and that also leads to, you know, the opposite of cancer is Capricorn, which is judgment. And the beautiful thing about cancer is not only do they honor their own feelings, but they allow and accept and it's okay for everybody else to have their own feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, that's just the way John is. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, oh yeah, Lucy always talks like that. You know, it's a big deal. So what? You know, it, there is this, uh, there's this other generous, you know, Jupiter and Cancer. It's just this, this capacity for all of us to, you know, kind of uh, open to this idea of familia, of, of of the greater family, the bigger family, allowing more diversity within the unified field. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, on a psychic level, this Jupiter in Cancer is just like opening us all to, uh, you know, different vibrations, different, you know, deeper inner intuitive feelings, and it's just like, uh, you know, more people are just getting more psychic every day, mm. and <laughs> and the great Jupiter, you know, is just like we're all becoming our. It's it's like. We should be able to see our skin getting thinner <laughs> because, you know, as a species, we are all becoming highly, way more sensitized. Mm -hmm. Part of us, you know, the evolutionary process at this time is Neptune in Pisces, which is trying, yeah, to this Jupiter Lilith and Saturn in Scorpio, we have this grand trine going on, is this whole breakdown of separation, is the breakdown of the immune system, is the end of privacy, is the beginning of unity. I mean, there's this whole aspect of what's going on now on many different levels, you know, whether it's Facebook or your iPhone and, you know, your loss of personal privacy or it's some autoimmune system disorder because you have boundary issues on a physical level. Mm -hmm. but this, you know, this, this is this whole sense in this whole idea of I am you and you are me and we are all one. <laughs> like it or not, <laughs> comfortable or not, you know, we are, I feel, sensing our unity and our, you know, this mirrors and our relationships becoming, you know, we're all just getting, you know, way more sensitive, which also is it makes it easier for people to get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Some people are 
overstimulated and overwhelmed, and you know, it's just because you know, we're getting more sensitized all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this retrograde Jupiter, you know, is also going to be, you know, I think increasing that sensitivity, you know, on a one by one personal individual basis, or even more than it is when it's direct. It's so cool to see how these planets align. You are, you already see ahead of time, you know, and you you have a basic idea of how things will play out, but yet the whole collective consciousness still plays a role in that. And it's it's just fascinating to 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 watch it all unfold and you know, pretty much it hits the nail on the head every time. Now, we do have some uh some callers here. Do you want to bring a caller in there, Kendra? <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's see here. We've got uh I think 619 has been holding the longest, correct? Yep. All right. Well, 619, you're our live on Inside E Radio. Are you there? Hello, caller from 619 area code. Are you with us? All right. Yeah, we'll put him back. Yep, yeah, put you on mute. All right. Um, hitting it there. Okay. Next we have uh, Tessa, it looks like, from area code 801. Uh, yeah, we got it. Okay. And that's the echo going on there. Let's try. Uh, right. Let's try seven eight zero. Seven eight zero. You're on N five D radio with Kendra Gregg and Tom Lesher. Can we get your name? Hey, it's uh, Jay calling from Canada. How's it going, Greg? Hi, Jay. Hey. Welcome back, brother. Hey, hey no problem. No problem, brother. It's always great talking to you down south. So it's really interesting uh, conversation to have regarding the planets and stuff like that. So I have this question for you, um, for your guest, Tom. Uh, in regards to, um, I saw a crop circle, and there's some sort of event coming on November 28th uh, of 2013. I just wondered, is there a comet passing by that affects some stuff? I just wondered what's going on with that. And my second question is that all these trines are, are happening right now. I, and I believe we have a blue moon actually tomorrow also, which is interesting. But uh, is there another trine that's another triangle or trine or grand sextile that's happening on, on uh, August 26th? You know, these, the, the grand trines, you know, with these outer planets are so um, in effect for such a long period of time. Um, and particularly if you take into account Chiron and the north node of the moon, you've got this Jupiter grand trine with the, the north node of the moon in Chiron that will be, you know, um, going on right then, uh, you know, for the rest of this month. And, and then the Lilith still in that grand trine with Saturn and Neptune throughout this whole time period also. So those are, you know, those are a couple of grand trines that are going on, but, you know, I could also follow along with the moon and the, and the inner planets to get some grand trines that may just be happening, you know, on, for a weekend or for a few days. But to, uh, but to get to your, you know, we, we have this eclipse happening on uh, November 3rd. And uh-huh. the big thing that I see happening in late October and into November is that, you know, the sun is going to be going into Scorpio and Venus. Uh, we're going to have this uh, uh, Saturn conjunct the north node of the moon. It's very powerful in September. And then Venus is going to be coming around through there, too. And then the sun is going to be joining it. And so there is this, you know, there's this kind of buildup of energy around the north node of the moon in Scorpio with Saturn also there that really, uh, well, if the, you know, if the, <laughs> if the temple is going to pop, you know, that's when it's going to be. <laughs> really? You know. It's it just, you know, uh, this, this is a, a, a big time. Saturn conjunct the North Node is just a calling. You know, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. And the North Node of the Moon is our collective destiny. And, you know, these two coming together through September, October, November, this is it's even starting now, okay? This is just the time of we are getting called to the carpet, you know, called to the rug of what have you been doing? What are you up to? Is it in alignment with the, you know, yeah. with the law? 
Yeah. And there are, you know, there are laws beyond man-made laws. And this can be a time, I think, of, of correction, you know, of realignment of what has been going on in the third dimension with what is really, um, you know, wanting to come out. You know, I I, th I feel that you know, 2013 is more like, you know, if you didn't if it didn't carry on from 2012, it's like you know, here are the opportunities and and also here are the pieces on the floor basically, and we're going to do about them right now. But also the opportunities are presenting themselves, or especially for me actually too. And uh, right now, because you know, 2012 for a lot of people was was really you know dramatic if you want to call it that. So. 2012 was really, uh, you know, really challenging, really difficult. But the thing that I'm feeling about this 2013 is like, so it's it is, it's kind of, and this is also Saturn conjunct the North Node of the Moon. It's almost a call to action. It's like grow up. If you want to be a mini god or a mini goddess, if you want to create your own reality, well, you need initiative. You, it's like we need to create this. We can't hang out and wait for, you know, somebody else to do it for us. As individuals, it's time for every one of us to, like, step up. It's time to volunteer. It's time to take on, you know, a project. It's time to come out of the woodwork. It's time to, you know, in some cases, stop meditating <laughs> and start doing something, you know. It's... Um, so 2013 is like, yeah, it's a new paradigm. If and when the new paradigm people, you know, get uh, get you know get out of bed and get out there and you know uh, and start making it happen. Yeah, awesome. I find All that right. too. Yeah. Jay, we really appreciate you calling in. Thanks much to both of you. Thanks for me letting me part of the show. Thanks much all. So thanks much again. Uh, Take absolutely. care, brother. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks, Kendra. Nice to meet you. All right. Well, you know, I, I think we're, you know, all, all of us are kind of in that point, at least, you know, I am. It's like of really wanting to uh, know what we need to be doing right now. I think internally we are, we all know what we need to be doing, but we're torn, you know, because we're still living in this, you know, crazy world, <laughs> period, you know. Um, so what advice do you have for people um, Right now, I've heard a lot of people say that we need to be focusing on um, healing our bodies, um, making sure that, you know, we, we focus on what we eat, what we drink, the things, you know, that we're doing to ourselves, our pH levels. Um, there's a lot of things that have to do with our bodies, our temples. How much of how much of that is, in your opinion, do you feel is is important? Because I've had some people say, "Well, you're not going anywhere doing anything until you heal your heal your body and get your your frequencies, you know, correct and all this." It's, and some people look at that as being very intimidating. And so, how important is that on the on the grand scale, uh, in your opinion, Tom? Are our bodies well I prepared? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty big. I, I, I think it, it, it always has been and always will be. So, I, you know, in terms of it being more of a focus in 2013 than it was in 12 or will be in 14, I don't know that I would, you know. I, it's just like the, the body is an instrument, mm -hmm. and, and the better shape it's in, the better signals, the better instincts, the better, you know, uh, responses, the, you know, I mean, the, the more you're going to be able to see, hear, touch, sense, and pick up, you know, I mean, so it's just, you'll be able to interact with your environment, you know, more, uh, what, you know, better, what can I say, you know, just the better shape your body is in. So where would you suggest people start with that process? Do you think, uh, you know, is, or is it all based on the individual, in your opinion? Is that, once again, something that, that we need to go within ourselves to figure out? Or can you, is, is there some basis that we can go by? Should we start doing yoga first? Should we do a detox, a colon cleanse, check, you know? Yeah, for sure. I think that the liver cleanse is a, is a, is a really good one, for sure. But the main I'd say the main thing is with this Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto, Uranus is the nervous system, okay? And and we are just all getting jazzed and buzzed. Mm -hmm. And it's just, 
what you know we are getting so stimulated and the important thing to feel your feelings you know it's like all the Starbucks all the coffee all the nicotine all the sugar all these stimulants just shoot us up into our heads get our monkey minds going you know distract us from feeling our feelings get us involved in the outside world get us you know it's it's almost you know part of the whole control thing of making us into automatonic robots that just show up at work you know give them some coffee get them going and <laughs> get them to produce and i just encourage people to knock off the stimulants you know if you can just you know, I you know I switched to yerba mate tea, you know, and, and drinking less coffee, and you know doing just you know it's it's just slow down. Mm -hmm. Slow down is the main thing. Back out of your schedule and your system and your busyness and your head mind games, so you can feel your feelings. Mm -hmm. And beyond that. When you do feel those feelings, with the Saturn North Node in Scorpio, the main you know the main thing for me that I see is it's time to trust, mm -hmm. and it's time to commit. It's time to be intimate, vulnerable, humble yourself, get off your high horse, stop being in the mode of self-protection, and actually merge. As hard as it is to trust again. Unite again, let down your barriers and walls and defenses and love again and open your heart again. This is really the North Node in Scorpio is about you know, merging, cooperating, and, and really feeling deeply, mm -hmm. allowing yourself to be transformed through relationships. Don't go into that South Node in Taurus of, you know, um, self-sufficient, uh, you know, I'm just going to, you know, take care of myself and back out. One quick question for you. Are there any upcoming alignments in particular that you're looking forward to? Well, well yeah, I've been talking about, you know, this, uh, the Saturn conjunction North Node is on September 18th. You know, that, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's, you know, going to be a, a, a big time when there is a visible shift in you know, Saturn's third dimensional reality. Right? This is not, you know, it's a time for us to, you know, to actually see something. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, and I and I gotta say that I, I'm really looking forward also to uh, December eighth. Uh, Mars is going to be moving up into Libra and it's going to uh, create a, a grand cross. Yeah, with this Lilith, Jupiter, and Cancer, mm -hmm. Saturn. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Pluto, Uranus. You know that P square. You know, Mars is going to move up there into Libra in December, and then it's going to go farther up into Libra and go retrograde and come back again to make the uh, to make another grand cross next spring. But I think December eighth is going to uh, be a, a mover and shaker. What do you see happening? on that date or uh, around that date yeah well th you know that would be the time of you know a uh, large scale uh, revolution large, large scale <laughs> yeah. Woo yeah. You know. yeah you know liberation I, I, I see it as a you know a real time of you know Mars moving into Libra is about justice and fairness and equality and it's just like you know what with Jupiter and Uranus and Pluto, it's just like we have had enough. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a triple Libra. Tell me about it. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Well, you got it going on, man. Well, you know, Helene and I were talking about the Return to Atlantis conference, and all the speakers and the hosts are either air or fire signs. Oh, my God. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a gas. <laughs> <laughs> so before we let you go, Tom, would you like to tell our listeners how to get a hold of you and where you'll be next on the Cape Hacha Healing Festival Tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, 
Uh, this is uh, we just uh, completed our last one, so the uh, it's over. The and I'm I'm heading back down to Costa Rica uh, next week. Okay. Yeah. And so, how and so how can our listeners get a hold of you? Oh, well, I am at New Paradigm Astrology. Dot com. And uh, for readings and for, you know, download of talks or, you know, my schedule of uh, workshops and uh, events and things that I'm doing, whatever. It's, it's all, uh, you know, the, the community forum. It's, uh, everything is on that website, yeah. And uh, you can always find his videos on In5D Alternative News. Every time they come out, they're right there. <laughs> But I would suggest um, subscribing to his YouTube channel. Would you like to share that with our listeners as well? Let me see. Yep, we, yep, we lost him again. Uh, oh, sugar. Let me see. Tommy there? Okay. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up from this point. And um, I'm really looking forward to meeting Tom here in Sarasota. That's going to be great. And I know you'll, <laughs> you're looking forward to that too, Kendra. Oh, gosh, yes, yes, absolutely. Many hugs will be given. Uh -huh. Some kisses too. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a great time. I think he's actually coming here a few days early. I'm not sure if uh, Helene or I are going to pick him up at the airport or not. Oh, I think we got him back. You back, Joe? Okay, good, good. I was asking, uh, what, can can you share with our listeners what your YouTube channel is? I, you just type in Tom Lesher. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the connection sounds really good right now too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we've had the whole time. <laughs> I know. Well, I was just telling Kendra how much I'm looking forward to meeting you here in person in Sarasota, brother. Yeah, yeah. Elaine said uh, I was uh, coming maybe and even staying with you a night or something. Yeah, that's fine, definitely. Um, yeah, I'll be picking you up in my convertible, and we'll pop the top and check out the stars on as we're driving down I-75. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Look out, Sarasota. Yep, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Well, are thank you. you. Gonna, are you going to be there, Kendra? Oh, yes. I wouldn't miss it for the world. All right on. All right, you two. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being on in 5 It was our pleasure. Radio, brother. Okay, love you. Love you too, bro. We'll see you love soon. You. Okay. okay. Aloha. Okay. Take care now. All right, so next week, Kendra and I will be welcoming contactee George Cavasilis to N5D Radio. So be sure to tune in next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and midnight UK. On behalf of my co-host, Kendra, this is Greg from N5D.com. Namaste, everyone.